What's up everybody? Welcome. My name is Alex and in this episode of the Rotary Night Build we're talking gauges. The gauge in particular is the AEM wideband failsafe gauge. This is a combination gauge for air fuel ratio and boost control. So if you're interested, stick around and see what happens. Okay, so before we get started, there's two things you're gonna to wanna to install onto your laptop. One is the AEM wideband failsafe software. This is the configuration software that you're gonna to need to actually set up the gauge. Two, if you wanna do any type of data acquisition or record what the gauge is seeing, you're gonna to wanna to install the AEM data software. So with this gauge, I'll be able to record what the air fuel ratio is doing, the boost control, and uh, what, those, what those are doing with respect to RPM. So you'll need the AEM data software if you wanna check those out and download some of your log files from the gauge. In this kit, I'll be using three feet of vacuum hose. We have a USB extension cable, followed by the harness for the sensor, the harness for the gauge, the gauge itself, and then the sensor itself. The hardware installation for this project is actually pretty straightforward. There's only two pieces, the wideband sensor and the vacuum hose. Now, for the wideband sensor, you're going to want to make sure you have an additional O2 sensor bone in your downpipe. It needs to be at least 18 inches downstream from the turbo. And another thing to note is the position of the sensor. You don't want to have it perfectly horizontal in the downpipe. You want to have it at a slight angle. That angle should at least be 10 degrees according to AEM. This is to avoid moisture contaminating the tip and giving false readings. You may notice in my initial installation of the sensor, the wiring is really close to the heat shield. It's at a 90 degree bend. This isn't good for durability because it can wear the wires through with vibration. So what I end up doing is hammering part of the heat shield to give more clearance. And actually, my permanent fix has already been installed. I installed a new downpipe from Racing Beat that's slightly shorter and positions the sensor in a better location where there's more clearance. You can see the picture here. I actually had to install the O2 sensor bunk from the kit onto the Racing Beat downpipe because the Racing Beat downpipe does not come with an O2 sensor bunk installed. So, right, correction, it doesn't come with a secondary O2 sensor bunk installed. It comes with a primary one for the stock sensor but not an aftermarket gauge like this application. Now we move on to the vacuum hose installation. I'm installing the vacuum hose into the top nipple of the air intake manifold you see here. And I had a heck of a time getting my fat hands in between the manifold and the firewall. But eventually, I was able to get it in there. The hole that I'm using to route the vacuum hose and the wiring for the wideband sensor used to be an air conditioning line pass-through. I simply pull the vacuum hose all the way through and route it underneath the dash to the driver's side of the car. Now it's time for the wiring to the gauge and to install the gauge itself. If you've never done anything involving wiring, it may seem challenging at first, but this is actually a very easy and straightforward install. Now, if you're looking at the wiring diagram, it may seem complicated because you have at least 10 plus wires. Uh, but in actuality, we only have four wires to really worry about. And since we don't have a data logger that we're installing or incorporating this with, we're gonna remove that from the wiring diagram and just focus on the gauge itself and what's involved. We are now only left with the ground, the 12 volt ignition source, the dimmer switch from the headlights, and then the RPM signal. For my 12 volt ignition source, I ended up tapping into the cruise control plug since this car does not have cruise control. To find the right wire for the dimmer, I took my multimeter and connected it to the headlight switch until I found the correct connection. Here you can see I'm cycling the switch and the voltage varies up and down, up to 12 volts almost. And last but not least, the RPM signal. For this, I spliced into the wire behind the gauge. You can see in the stock wiring diagram here. 
you want to look for a yellow and blue wire. And to be honest, that's about it for the wiring. The wiring is real simple. Uh, you guys should already know how to do the ground. Just find yourself a ground nearby and that's about it. Now the last piece of the puzzle is actually installing the gauge into the holder for the gauge. Uh, you'll need to buy a gauge mount unless you have one depending on where you want to mount it. I just got a universal one. You can click in the link below and you can see the one that I bought. Um, and to mount it, I did a really simple method. If you ever use a GoPro, you know that they have this double-sided 3M tape. That's what I used to attach mine onto the dash. Previously, uh, God, like four or five years ago, I tried to drill some screws and mount things directly onto the plastic of this old and brittle plastic dash. That had worked fine until the sun had taken a beating to it and eventually it cracked those parts. I've learned I'm not gonna drill through this old plastic again, so 3M double-sided tape works great. <laughs> uh, and it hasn't moved at all. I've been driving with this for like two months now and it's been fine. I hope I didn't oversimplify the process at all. The wiring is pretty straightforward. It is only those four wires that you have to worry about. If anything makes um, or doesn't make sense and it's confusing, please feel free to ask in the comments down below. Uh, the only next step now is to configure the gauge into the software. So I'm gonna take my laptop downstairs with me, hook it up to the car so you guys can see how I actually configured the gauge. And uh, from there, to be honest, that's about it. Okay, with the gauge plugged into the computer, your gauge should say USB on the display. Now, the way I have mine set up is if you go to the gauge configuration tab here, and in here you'll see there's options to just change the display, um, the alarm, flash speed if you have an alarm set, you can change the dimmer uh, settings and then you can actually change the colors uh, for the bar graph. So for my setup I have the air fuel ratio displayed in the center display. For the bar graph it depends on the face plate you have installed but I have the boost uh, gauge for the bar graph and that goes from minus 30 uh, inches of mercury and all the way up to 30 psi and the colors I had set up are for me but it could be different for everybody so for me the ideal boost range is between um, 6 to 10 p psi let's say I don't want to go over 10 uh, so I have it as green from 6 to 10 it's yellow from 0 to 5 and it's yellow again when it goes beyond 10 as hold up that's a worry that's too much and then it turns to red when it gets above 15 psi meaning motor is about to explode and that is my setup you can copy this if you want you can alter it you can change things around this is just what i did for mine now in the other display, this is where you can actually set up the graph if you want to um, do some of the readings and you can also set up the RPM. So for this car, the RPM signal is at two pulses per revolution. And I'll start the car up so you can see what happens. Now, it's been a while since I've started the car, so I should let it warm up. She idles a little low when she's cold, but you can see uh, everything seems to be working. It's reading AFRs, it's reading RPM, and yeah, more or less this is what you should see. But yeah, thanks again for watching. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video, found it informative. If um, you have any feedback, also don't hesitate to leave some feedback. Feel free to reach me out on Instagram. Uh, that's also an easy way to ask me any questions about the things I've done. Uh, send me a DM and I'll be around. Uh, thanks again for watching. The next video will probably be about the new exhaust that I have on the car. 
So I'll show you guys that here shortly. Alright, take care. Later.